Hey, I want to talk to you for a little bit today about this subject. There's power in the house. How, how, many, how many believe there's, there, there really is power in the house? I want to talk to you because I want to give the devil a black eye. I think that one of the things he's done through this COVID um, virus is tried to distract people from getting back to houses of worship. But people need to know that there's power in God's house. You know, I want to talk to you for a little bit about what the Bible says about power that's in God's, God's house. It's, it's so easy, too easy, to, to just go through life and um, live life on our own, feeling like we don't need anybody's help. We don't need anybody, anybody else. But I want to tell you this, you will never, you will never reach your full potential by yourself. You can be good by yourself, but you will never be great by yourself. We were wired to need each other. We were made to be connected. Your strength is in your connectivity. Much of your possibility is in your connectivity. You ever seen, you ever seen a documentary or maybe you, you've seen geese fly and they fly in a V formation? You ever seen that? Um, it's interesting that when geese fly in that formation, scientists, people who study animals, they say that they've proven that the geese have figured out, watch this, they utilize 40% less energy when they fly in the V formation. I didn't know this, someone told me at the end of the last service, because uh, they study geese, and they said, you know, whenever you, if you're especially up north, sometimes we, you know, we see small schools of geese down here, but up north, they'll see hundreds at a time in a V. They call it a double V formation, spread out a mile wide, the, the geese, because they realize together they can go 40% further faster. You'll hear them, it's almost like they're singing songs. You'll hear them singing. Had y'all like my geese interpretation? <laughs> I don't know what geese sound like, but, but they say whenever you hear those geese singing, what they're really doing, all of the geese are encouraging the geese that's out in front at that time. You and I, we, we, we are much like that. We, were, we, really, we really are better together. In fact, in the Bible, more than 30 times in the Bible, it says one another. It says love one another, encourage one another. It says in the Bible that we're to serve one another. You and I, listen, we need one another's in our life. There is things, God has ordained relationships for you, relationships for me, that it's impossible for us to reach our full potential unless we step into those relationships. I want to just talk to you about the power of that for a few minutes. You may, you may be able to, you may think, you know, you, you, by yourself, you can go as far as you have in your mind to go, but I can promise you this, you cannot go as far as God wants you to go by yourself. Because God's plans are bigger, God's plans are broader, God's plans are, are more rewarding and more fulfilling. And I wonder today how many's here and maybe you're flying solo. Maybe, maybe you're just going through life, maybe you're, you're doing it on, on your own. Have you ever noticed, you ever watch a football game, at the end of a football game, maybe a running back you know, has an exceptional game and maybe sets new records, he has a great game of rushing and a reporter will come up to him at the end of the game, do an interview and say, how did you do it? What's the first thing almost every running back says? Well, I couldn't have done it without my offensive line blocking for me. Those guys are amazing. I couldn't have done it without my coach who's always pushing me, making me better. I couldn't do it without my, 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 my strength and conditioning coaches who are always working hard to make, me, to make me stronger. He realizes that he's not great by himself. He can only, he can only be great Together, you can be good all by yourself, but you will never, ever be great all by yourself. And the Bible talks a lot about that. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, because God knew there's strength, there's power whenever we, we come together. Forsake not, don't, don't not do this. Don't forsake coming together. It's powerful. Because when we come together as believers, there's things that happen. When we begin to, it's not just my praise, 
It's your praise and your praise and your praise and your praise. And then it's my praise. And then it becomes our praise. It's not just my joy. But joy gets released whenever we praise. Hope gets released whenever we praise. Potential gets released whenever we praise. God's presence gets released whenever we praise. And we do it all together. Now think about, think about this for a moment. You come into God's house. We, it's like you come into God's house and whatever the week took out of you, God is recharging you. God has given that, he's given that back to you. He's pouring it right, David said it like this. David said this, he said, come let's magnify the Lord together. He didn't say just magnify the Lord. He said, you come with me, let's go, let's magnify the Lord. And when we do it, let's do it together. Because you know what happens? Whenever we come together and we begin to worship, we begin to magnify the Lord, the intensity is turned up. And all of a sudden, our worship becomes louder and it becomes stronger and it becomes more connected. And it's powerful because you come into a place like this and if there's just a diversity of people that come, come into a room like this. You got rich people, you got poor people, you got black people, you got white people, you got Hispanic people, you got Asian people, you got Indian people. You've got all kinds of people who come into this, who come into this place. And I hear it all the time. I hear people say things like, I was just driving by and something drew me in. I hear people say, I came in, I've never been here before. And all I could do was cry. I sat through the whole service and cried. Why is that? What, what, what is it? I mean, there's lots of big buildings in the world, and people gather in big buildings, but they don't walk through the buildings weeping. It's something about the presence of God. The collective presence of God that happens when people come together in worship. You know what it does? Whenever we begin to collectively worship, it begins to break down walls and, and people begin to break through bondages and addictions in their life. Depression begins to lift off people's life. Joy begins to come into people's life. Healing begins to come in people's life. Sickness begins to leave people's life. Because there's things that happen inside the house of the Lord. Listen, I love online and, and I, love, I love TV and, and I love radio, but none of those things, listen, those aren't gifts from God to be a substitute from gathering in the house of God. They're not, they're not substitutes. They're not to replace. They're to complement. So he says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. These things that we do... CDs and radio and, and, and an XM radio and internet radio and, 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 and television and online. Those are, those are meant to be additions. They're meant to be supplements. They're never, ever meant to be replacements for gathering. And I know you got to get up early. you got to get the kids ready. you got to get dressed. you got to drive around across town. It might be your only day off. But you know what else I know? Watch this. You'll never, you'll never sacrifice or you'll never give anything to God that God won't give you something greater in return. It's powerful what happens. You, you give God the first part of your week. I say it all the time. We give God the first part of our week. I believe that invites his blessings on the rest of our week. And God will never, you'll never give God something and he'll not give you something greater in return. I believe whenever we start our week off in worship, we invite God to move in the rest of our week. He'll send business that you didn't even know was coming. He'll give you deals that were unexpected. He'll send relationships into your life. He'll give promotions. He'll do things in our lives whenever we set him first. The Bible says this, set first, put first the kingdom of God, God's things, and then all these things. When we prioritize God's house first at the beginning of the week, we set our week in order for God to honor and reward that faithfulness. You know, it's, it's interesting. When you, when, you come into, when you come into a place like, like, like this, lots of times I've come in and I've got lots on my mind and I've got lots of challenges, you know, that I'm, I'm dealing with or I'm going through, but I open up the doors and I hear those songs and I hear the worship, and I see the smiles on people's faces, and I begin to get high fives, handshakes, and hugs, and all of a sudden I'm reminded that the God that's in me is greater than everything that's going on around me, and He is worthy of my very best praise. And I wouldn't get that unless I see sometimes when I'm weak, I need you to be strong. Sometimes when you're weak, you're going to need me to be strong. But we pull together in the house of God. But the power is in our connectivity, 
Next week, you're going to have the opportunity to start over the next few weeks signing up for small groups. It's important because your power is in your connectivity. You need to be connected to other people because when you're weak, somebody else will be strong. Sometimes my faith is going to be low, and I'm going to need your faith to pick me up. Sometimes I'm going to need a smile. Sometimes I'm going to need a handshake. Sometimes I'm going to need to hear your praise. It's like when we come into God's house, it's he's like he's refueling, like he's recharging our batteries. And it happens in here. It's like everything the week took out of you, God brings you into his house, and he recharges you. He refuels you. It's like he's charging our batteries in the house of the Lord. I mean, maybe you've noticed that I can stand around my house or I can stand in the shower. I can be in my car. I can be watching something online. I can be watching a YouTube video and I can worship and I can sing and it's good. But man, I can come into here and we all get to singing and we all get to worshiping and it goes from good to great just like that because there's power in the house. There's something powerful. This home will never, I know it's easy. Oh, we're just going to chill. Listen, I believe, listen, here's the reason I told you I'm preaching this message. Because I believe the devil used this COVID virus as an intentional attack to divide the body of Christ, to reset habits in people's lives, to keep them from gathering when God said forsake. Now, the only good thing about the devil is he's completely predictable. I mean, think about it. If, if you were the devil, what would you do? Technology is not a gift from God to keep people out of the house of God. I believe it can be a great gift from God. I can tell you story after story about our technology and streams. And, and it is used by God. But it is always meant to be a supplement not a replacement for gathering in the house of God. The Bible is, is really, really clear about forsaking not the assembling of yourselves. Is this all right today? Is it all right? I talk to people. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to me. I talk to people around the Around the, um, around the church who've been here a long time, and they'll tell me stories about how much the church has meant to them. They'll tell me stories about how, how they wouldn't have made it if it hadn't have been for the church. And I'm looking back at their lives thinking, man, if it weren't for your life, I can name you 10 people who wouldn't have made it. If it wasn't for your faithfulness, for the way you serve, for the way you pray, for the way you worship, countless people, th these people who are saying, I wouldn't have made it without the church, they're the same people who, there's people in the church who wouldn't have made it without them. Why? Because it's all of us working together. Maybe you're here and you're like, I, I'm not really that big a deal. I mean, I'm just one person and, and I'm really not, I'm not going to make that. Yeah, I just sit in the very back and nobody really sees me. I slip out whenever it's over. No, you do make a difference. Your presence makes a difference. Because when you came in, you came in with expectancy. You came in with the presence of God. You came in with confidence of God. And when your confidence gets mixed with their confidence and their confidence and their confidence, and the praise begins to go up power begins to come down there's power in the house of the Lord every person matters every person matters every seat matters it's powerful when you start thinking about well, Scott I'm just I'm just that, that one person no the Bible says in Matthew 18 when two or three of us when we get together in his name when we gather in his midst, imagine what happens if two or three can do that. Imagine what happens when three or four or 500 or 3,000 or 30,000 get together. I just, I just, I just believe that it, that it gets stronger and it gets more powerful and it gets more multiplied as people come together in God's house. Here's what I'm saying. Don't miss it if you can avoid it. Don't miss it. If you can avoid it. Just a few weeks ago, I got a, I got a text message from a guy named Mikey Hausman here in the church. And um, I, I, the message, it was awesome. Here's what it said. It says, watch this. The more you miss church, the less you'll miss church. So the Bible says about that, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, because the more you miss church, the less you will miss church. 
there's power. There's, there's power that happens. I know God's power is everywhere. And if you're a follower of Jesus, His presence is with you and it's on you. And He can do whatever He wants to do anywhere. He can do it in your small group. He can do it in your car. He can do it in your... I, I get all that. He can do it in the hospital room. I get all that. But listen, the reason the Bible is... He, he, he says, forsake not. He mandates it. He, he says, listen, prioritize this. We'll, we'll see that in just a moment. It's because he understands that there's power in collective, in corporate worship. Things that would take you out individually don't have the power to take you out corporately. And when we join our, our faith, when it, when it comes together, imagine what, what can happen. Don't miss it. Because the more you miss it, less you're going to to miss it if you're watching this online and maybe you pick it up a month or two from now wherever you are across the world find you a good church find you a good church get connected get plugged in don't compare churches listen I'll say this don't compare churches wherever you are if you came here from another church don't compare this church to that church if you're going to another church don't compare that church to, to this church I mean you're not going to find the same stuff don't compare. The music may be different here or different there. Their pastor may not be near as good looking as I am. Don't compare him to me. It's, just, it's not. That's, that's a little too big a laugh. Yeah. Wasn't that funny? So, so don't, don't compare. Don't compare the worship. Don't compare the greeter. Don't compare the buildings. Just come in with the presence of God on you. Come in expecting, knowing that you, you are a part of something greater. You are a part of creating an atmosphere for God's glory, for God's presence, for God's power to fall in that house. Because corporately, you can do more than any of you could ever do on an individual basis. It's powerful. It's powerful. He goes on and he says this. Listen. He says... He says, forsake not the assembling together as the manner of some is. And he goes on in another, one, another translation and he says, as some are in the habit of doing. Forsake not the assembling together as some people get into the habit of doing. Like if you're out more than you're in, as some are in the habit of doing. He just says, Paul's teaching a very young New Testament church how to be a strong church and how to be a strong believer. And he says, if you want to be strong, don't do this. Don't forsake the coming together because there's power in the house. There's, there's power in the house of God, so don't miss that. And I know there's so many, so many distractions, so many things to get us, to get us off course. But you need, I need, we need the protection that comes with being a part of the body of Christ. We need the covering that comes with being a part of the body of Christ. I'm accountable to you and you're accountable to me. Any person who's without accountability is in trouble. Everybody has to live with accountability in their life. The person who lives without accountability in their life is the person who is in big trouble. Even Jesus, who was in authority, always exercised being under the authority of his Father. Not my will, but your will be done. When we come together corporately, we exercise the reality that we're coming under the authority, under the protection of one another. Holding each other accountable for our faith to be held high, for our expectation to be held high, for our inspiration to be there, for our hopes to not fade away, for our faith to not die, for our worship to be genuine and authentic and real and expecting God to do something great in our lives. I know so many great people. I could tell you name after name of great people, great friends of mine who were connected. They were faithful. They were serving. They were giving. They were worshiping. They were involved. They were inter intertwined. They were connected in the church. And at some point, they got distracted. And they said, you know what? I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a good Christian. I'm strong. I can do it on my own. And they pulled away from church. They pulled away from gathering. And the devastation that I've seen come into people's lives losing their marriages, losing their families, turning to all types of addiction. And I can't help but ask the question, I wonder what would have happened. How would their lives have been different if they had stayed 
in connectivity with the body of Christ. If they had stayed under the covering, under the protective covering, in right relationship, if they would have continued to serve and continued to worship and continued to be a part, how would their stories be different now? Because there's power in the house. There's, there's power in God's house. I'm grateful because of, because of what you mean in my life. Do you know what? You in my life, because I'm connected to you, and I hope because you're connected to me, I hope there are temptations I don't even have to deal with because you're protecting me from stepping into those places where I would be tempted. There's, there's struggles that I don't even have to go through because your smile, your hug, your praise, your worship, encouraging me, pushing me forward in my faith, keeps me away from places that would cause me to struggle. And when my mind begins to struggle, watching you worship, hearing you sing, hearing you pray, it keeps my mind pure and keeps me from the struggles that I would have to go through. Because we do that corporately for one another. Imagine this. How many, how many like sports? Say yes. But the ones who don't like sports, you'll really appreciate this analogy. I've seen people, they go to up north, they go to, they go to football games, and, and they will, I mean, they'll drive miles, and they'll wait and wait through thick traffic. We'll walk a mile to get to a stadium, and then they'll sit in a nosebleed section, and it's 20 degrees outside. You can't even see the field because your eyelashes are frozen over. Or if you're in Sanford Stadium, you'll walk two miles to walk, you know, all the way up to the nosebleeds in the blazing sun, 127 degrees. You look like a scrambled egg when you leave or like a raccoon but you know what they'll sit up there and they'll cheer and they'll pull their team on you know why because that's their team and because they're a fan but imagine what would happen if every weekend when we got ready or whenever we came into God's house we came with that same attitude I am a fan but watch this but watch this, I'm not cheering on my team. I am cheering on the creator and the sustainer of the entire universe, the maker of my life. It, it takes on another level. I mean, come on, I love the Bulldogs, but I'm not going to cheer for them louder than I cheer for him. You know why? Because the Bulldogs are up one day and down the next day. They may win this one, but they may lose this one. That one has never lost a battle yet. So that's the one. That's the one I'm going to give my worship to. If I'm going to be a fan, I'm going to be a fan of Jesus first. Listen to this. How many, how many want to flourish in life? How many just don't give a rip? How many want to flourish in life? Listen to this. Psalms 92. When you're planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish. One translation says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in his courts. The whole earth is his court. You want to flourish? Get planted. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, those who are plugged in, those who are faithful, those who, who make God's house a pri priority, they're going to bloom in life. They're going to they're flourish in life. David said it like this. He said, I love the sanctuary. It's the place where the glory shines. You know what's happening in this room right now? God's glory is shining on you. God's glory is shining down in this room as we corporately come together and lift up praise and, and we worship him. He, they, there's a reason David said, I love, I love the house of the Lord, the sanctuary, the place where your glory shines. Because as we gather together like this corporately and we begin to worship and we begin to pray and we begin to, to, to build each, each other's faith, God's glory, his strength, his healing, his encouragement begins to come down on, on all of us. And, and, and all of a sudden things begin to break through in our lives. We don't even know, but you're going to flourish. He says you plant yourself in the house, then you'll flourish. You'll go to work tomorrow and somebody will call in you weren't even expected. And they'll want to sign a contract that you didn't even see coming. Boss may call you in and say, hey, I got a promotion for you. You didn't even see it coming. A new friendship, relationship will come into your life. You didn't even see it coming coming there's a test that you didn't study for and God gives you all the answers he won't do that probably 
But he says when you plant yourself in the house, you can expect to flourish. When we plant here, we can expect for him to cause us to flourish out there. That's why David said, I love the sanctuary. Because that's where the glory of the Lord shines. He covers us. Flourishing. That car that almost hit you and swerved just in time to miss you. That wasn't luck. It's God causing you to flourish. And when you get a break at work that nobody else got, it's not just luck. It's God causing you to flourish. Watch this, Hebrews 10. It says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Watch this, let me read the rest of it to you. And so much more, in other words, especially as you see the day approaching. It says, be sure to come together. And especially as times get darker. Especially as more trouble, especially as more calamity comes. How many, how many believe that, that the coming of the Lord is really soon? He says, he says, forsake not the, especially, man, if there's ever been a dark time in our world, it is, it is the time that we are living in. It's almost every week there's a tragedy. Yesterday in New York City, girl pulls up in a car, gets out of her car, she takes eight steps in a crowded area, pulls out a pistol, shoots a girl in the head. Gets back in her car, drives off. You got vans driving into crowds of people, buses, cars driving into crowds of people. Violence, violence and crime is at a higher rate today than at any other time in American history. That's not political, that's fact. We've got viruses that we can't contain, we've got fires that we can't control. We've got floods that we can't stop. We've got racial tension at heights that we've never seen. We've got political division at a level that any of us have never known. If there's ever been a dark time, forsake not the assembling together, and so much more as you see the day approaching. I mean, you don't have to be a prophet to see that. You just have to read the Bible. Man. If there ever was a day, watch this. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors. Help them get dressed in the morning. Call them on Saturday night. Pick them up on Sunday morning. If there's ever been a time that we need to be in the house of the Lord, not because we're afraid, not because of fear, but to strengthen one another and encourage one another and pray for one another and lift one another up and stay united rather than divided. If there ever was a day that we needed to make God's house a priority in our life, today is the day. The greatest gift. Parents, you know why I'm so happy? I went up there and I saw 100 kids in that room worshiping Jesus because if there's one gift, listen, the greatest gift you can give your kids, parents, is not just to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, but it's to say, as for me and my house, we are going to get to the house of the Lord because there's power in the house. And the most important thing we'll ever teach teach our kids is there's power in God's house there's power in God's house uh, you ever um so much in God's house there's protection there's friendship there's peace there's there's faith there's there's hope there's there's joy there's protection there's healing all available in God's house and we're like penguins. You ever seen, seen penguins? I, I started talking about penguins today, and then I, I looked at me, and I looked at Elizabeth, and I'm like, we're dressed like penguins, and I'm talking about penguins. I, I invited her to the first service, come up here, and we can do penguin together, but she wouldn't. The 
But penguins, interesting animals, because they live in this climate that the, the temperature, you know, it, it, it stays a good part of the year for 20 degrees below zero. Winds blowing at 120 miles per hour. And scientists study penguins. They say those penguins in groups of, of 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 will come together and they call, they call their coming together a huddle. And when those penguins come, come together, they huddle up with, with, with one another. And, and all of a sudden, their, their, their feathers begin to, to warm their body. And their bodies begin to warm one another's bodies. And they say, scientists have studied it and said, in the middle of the huddle, 20 degrees below zero outside, wind blowing at 120 miles per hour, it's 70 degrees in the middle of the huddle. Why? Because their power, their protection is in their connectivity. Listen to me. Your protection is in your connectivity. Your power is in your connectivity. You can be good, but you'll never be great without being connected to people because God wired you to make to need people. God wired you for divine relationships. He did not, listen, you're not special. He didn't make you different. He wired you to be connected with other people. There's power, there's protection. Your, your protection is in your connectivity. That's why small groups matter so much. That's why being in God's house together like this, that's why it matters. It matters so much. Imagine what's going to happen if one of those penguins, just one of them, says, ah, you know what? I don't have time. I'm really busy. I got places to go. I got people to see. I got things to do. I'm just going to wobble over here all by myself. How many know it won't be long till that disconnected penguin is in penguin heaven because he can't survive in the cold? The same thing's true with you and I. I have so many friends, good friends, who wobbled out of the huddle, stopped attending church, lost their connectivity, and next they lost the things that mattered most, all because they forgot that their protection was not in their strength, but their protection was in their connectivity. They needed to be connected. There's a... Did you know that... Did you know that when you live connected, when you live in connectivity, did you know there's a commanded blessing... Did you know that? Did you know that God commands a blessing on those who live in connectivity? Let me, let me read, it, read it to you out of Psalms chapter 133, verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together, dwell together live together in unity. And then we read, it says a couple of other things about how, how pleasant it is. It talks about... It's, it's as beautiful as the oil that, that comes down from the prophet's beard, from the, the waters that sweep, sweep down from the highest mountains. And then it goes on in verse 3, and it says, watch this. It is there in that place, in that place of unity, togetherness, coming together. It says, it is there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. A commanded blessing for those who dwell together in connectivity, together in unity, coming together into the house of the Lord whenever we lift up the Lord. You know what it does? It unites us rather than divides us. There's a lot of people here today from a lot of different backgrounds. There, there are people from all different walks of life, all different races, all different social standings. There are Democrats that are here. There are Republicans that are here. There are Bulldogs that are here. There's Yellow Jackets that are here. There's some Gators here who need some prayer. I mean, there, there's, there's Falcons here, there's, 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 there's Braves here, there's rich people, poor people, young people, old people. But you know what I like most about this place? No matter what walk of life you come from, when you come through those doors, we leave all of that there. It doesn't matter what nationality you came from. It doesn't matter what mistake you made. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter who you voted for. All that matters is we came into this place to worship the same God, to lift up the name of Jesus, and there's power. 
power in that unity. That's what's beautiful about this place. There's power in that. There's unity. There's unity in that. That's the reason the Bible says, don't forsake it. Don't buy the pudding. Don't get out of the habit of coming together. Don't let your family get out of the habit of coming together. Tell your family, online's okay, but it'll never be a replacement. We need to be in the house. If you're, if you're healthy enough and you can get here, man, it's time to get into the house of the Lord. Is this okay? It's okay. I am. Um, I'm, I'm, I want you to see the power of a commanded blessing. I want you to see the power of your connectivity. I want you to. I want you to see, and I want you to understand. Not because I said. I want you to see what what the Bible says about the. The, the, the favor and healing and, and, and joy that rests in, in a place like this. Whatever it is that's kept you out, I want you to see that whatever it is that kept you out of church last week, when you got up and you showed up to church this week, you made whatever kept you out last week a little bit weaker. And whenever you show back up next week, you'll make it a little weaker. And when you show up the next week, it'll become a little weaker. And when you show up the following week, it'll become a little weaker. And, and you'll show up one week and all of a sudden, you've broken through all the distractions. I'm not telling you you'll never miss. You won't have things come up in your life. I'm talking about the habits that we prioritize in our life. It's all, people do, watch this, watch this. People do what people want to do. You can make up things, you can say things, but here, I, I, I is one, I is a people. And you know what I do? What I want to do. People do what people want to do. And it's still all right? All right, all right. Let me tell you what, what, what this story, I'm bringing this thing down to a close. In Psalms chapter 73 is a really, really great story because there's a um, man in the story, you know, David's writing, he says, lots of problems and lots of rejection and, and bad days are coming on him. And, and here's what he says. He says, all I have is trouble all day long. Anybody ever been like that? All I have is trouble. Anybody have trouble and talk about your trouble all the time? Don't raise your hand. Just don't do that so much. All I have is trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. I went to the edge of the cliff. I was almost, almost done. He's depressed. He's suicidal. He's almost done. Almost going to take that last leap. But then it says this. It goes on down. I was almost done. Verse 17. Then I went to the sanctuary. Then I went to the sanctuary. And in the sanctuary, keep reading, it says, in the sanctuary, I got a new perspective. I began to hear people thanking God. I began to see people pray. I began to see people's faith rise. I began to see their prayers rise. I began to see their praise rise. And when I began to see that, I was reminded that everything going on against me isn't as powerful as the one who lives on the inside of me. And in that moment, that defeated spirit had to leave. That depression had to leave he said he said I was all but done and I walked into the sanctuary and your smile and your smile lifted my spirits and your hug and your hug picked me up when I couldn't get up and your praise and your praise reminded me that there has to be a praise in my heart even on my hardest of days because praise is where my victory comes from I love it when I went to the house he wasn't there but a few minutes I guess and all of a sudden He's going from, I was, I was all but done, trouble finds me every day of my life, I'm about to jump off the cliff, to now, Lord, you hold my, you read, read it for yourself. He says, Lord, I know now you hold my right hand, and you have a glorious destiny ahead of me. Same verse, the guys, it's all bad, it's never going to get good, I'm going to jump off the cliff, nope. I'm going to go to church one last time. He goes to church one last time, and he comes out of church saying, Lord, you not only hold my right hand, but you've got a glorious future for me because there's power in the house. 
There's power in what happens. It's a new perspective. Happens here. People walk into Cornerstone. Beat down by life. People walk in here almost every week and it's their last stop. before jumping off the cliff. They don't have any praise left in them. Their faith is all but gone. They've bumped up against trouble after trouble after trouble. But they sit down on your row. And you don't even know what they've been through. But all of a sudden, they begin to they begin to watch you and your praise begins to create an atmosphere for a breakthrough to come into their life. Your smile lifts a depressed spirit off of their spirit. Your handshake or your hug brings encouragement that there is another perspective I can look towards in life. What happened? Power in the house because of a corporate coming together. And worship and praise. You look at David. What did he say? I went from jumping off a cliff to going into the sanctuary of the Lord to thanking God for holding my right hand and giving me a glorious destiny. He didn't drink a Red Bull to get fired up. He didn't watch Dr. Phil to get rid of depression. He didn't call the prayer hotline to have somebody pray for me. No, you know what he did? He went into the house of the Lord. And in the house of the Lord, he found power. And in the power, he found healing. And it happens in here every week. You can be the source of somebody's healing. Your praise can lift their faith. Your smile can lift depression off of their life. Your hug can bring encouragement back into their spirit. Because you matter. Sometimes you'll come in to be blessed. Sometimes you'll come in to be a blessing. Sometimes you'll come in to receive. Other times you'll come in to give. Sometimes you'll need a hug. Other times you'll give a hug. Sometimes you'll give a praise. Sometimes you'll catch a praise. But there's power. In the house of the Lord. You strengthen me. I strengthen you. You come in with a little faith. And 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 I come in with a little faith. We put all of our faith together. Now we've got mountain moving faith. Because there's power. In the house. Of the Lord. In Acts chapter 1. Jesus has died, come back to life, tells his followers, don't leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. In fact, he says, tarry here until the Holy Spirit falls. Scholars, if you study this, most scholars agree that there was about 500 people in the crowd when Jesus said to them, don't leave, stay here, tarry, till the Holy Spirit comes. But if you keep reading the story, there's only 120 who stayed. There was only 120 who were still in the room when the Holy Spirit fell. I mean, you have to ask the question, what happened to the 380? Did they get distracted? Were they busy? Things came up. They were tired. Life happened. We don't really know what happened to the 380, except they missed the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because they didn't tarry in the place where God said tarry. There's, there's, there's power in unity. There's, there's, there's power in the house. I believe, I believe there's power in being planted in the house of the Lord. Being planted. Anybody ever seen redwood trees? You may have ever been to the redwood forest and seen the redwoods or studied about the redwoods. Several years ago, our, our family went out to, <clears throat> we're out on vacation and we went 
to see the redwoods. Intriguing, I mean, fascinating trees. They, the, the tallest tree in the world. They live for like 2,000 years. They'll grow to be 350 feet tall. But what's most interesting about the, the redwood tree is their root system. Because if you study it, you'll find that their root system, their, their largest root on a redwood tree is about one inch in diameter. The deepest a redwood tree's root will ever go is 6 to 12 feet. So you have to ask, how is it possible for a tree 300 feet tall to live for over a thousand years through storms and through pests and through winds that blow down most trees, but those trees still stand? How is it even possible? Their roots are so shallow. Their roots are so small. But then when you begin to to, to learn as we did about the redwood you learn that while their re- roots don't grow deep they grow wide and they look for other redwood trees to intertwine their roots with and when you go into a redwood forest there may be hundreds or thousands of redwood trees all of their roots intertwined together so when the winds blow and the storms come and they want to blow against that tree. It's impossible to blow, to blow against that tree. It's only possible to blow against all the trees. And while this storm may have been able to take down one tree, there's no way the storm can take down all the trees. You and I are just like that. We're like, blessed are those who are planted, whose roots are in the house of the Lord. We may not run real, real deep, but we run wide. And we hold each other up. And those storms that would blow into our life and take me out as an individual, they're impossible to take us out corporately. You might take me out, but you can't take all of us out. And as long as I'm intertwined with you and you're intertwined with me, the storm can't come to me without coming to you. There's power in the house. And you and I, in so many ways, we're just like that redwood tree. And maybe, maybe you're here today and maybe, maybe those storms, maybe those winds, you feel like they're blowing against you. Maybe they're, they're, they're blowing against your health. Maybe they're blowing against your finances. Maybe they're, they're blowing against your education. I, I don't know, maybe they're blowing against relationships in, in your life. I want you to know you may be up against some obstacles, but I want you to look around this room right now. Because if you choose, if you choose to plant yourself and to allow your roots to be intertwined with all the other redwoods that are in this room, you'll begin to see the power of togetherness. You'll begin to understand that your power is in your connectivity. Your power is in the relationships that you are in partnership with. So when a storm blows, when the devil comes, you can say, devil, you can come at me if you want to, but it's not just me. you got to take out all of us because they've got me standing strong. I'll never forget, I'll never forget when my, my, my dad and mom left to go to Europe um, for the work they were doing there. And they had, had left, and I was, um, the, the church had asked me and Elizabeth to come on as their pastors. I was too young. I was too inexperienced. I didn't, I didn't know the things that I needed to know to lead a church. Most days I felt like a bigger failure than I did success. I prayed for strength, but I, I knew I didn't have what it took to lead, to build a church. But I'll never forget. There's a bunch of redwoods in the congregation a bunch of men who had been there for a long time who stood strong their roots were already intertwined with one another and they believed in me they wanted to see me succeed they wanted to see me stand when the world wanted to see me fall they wanted to see me succeed when the enemy wanted to see me fail And those redwoods, they begin to to, to stretch out their roots towards my roots. And our roots begin to grow together. And they begin to pray for me. And they begin to intercede for me. 
And when the enemy would come and try to attack my mind, they would remind me that it's not just me, but it's all of us he's up against. And when I didn't feel like I was enough, they became more than enough. And maybe you're here today. And maybe you're now like I was then. Maybe you feel like you're not enough for the storm that's blowing against your life. And you need the strength of the whole forest. You need to be reminded that that thing that was going to take you out individually doesn't have the power to take us out corporately. And because your roots are in the house, there's power. There's power. Before we leave, if you'd say, Scott, that's me. That's me. I feel like the wind's about to take me down. I feel it. I don't feel strong enough for the storm I'm in. I want you to know around this room there's a bunch of redwoods who are willing to stretch our roots out and intertwine with yours. And help hold you up when the enemy wants to take you down. If you're here and you've got faith to believe that there's power in the house. That your power is in your connectivity with people, brothers and sisters of faith, regardless of our background, regardless of what we came from, regardless of what we've been through. We're united in faith. And you need us to pray for you. I'm going to ask you just wherever you are not to come forward, just to stand. You need prayer, just stand. Don't look around, don't wait, don't wait on anybody else. If you need it, stand for it. Just stand. Stand. And God bless you. Now those of you that are still seated, if you've got faith to believe, if you're willing to intertwine your roots with their roots in faith, you're willing to lift them up, pray for their strength, their stamina, to remind them that you're not in this alone. We got a whole army of people. We got a whole church. And they, they can't take you out without taking us out. We're all in this thing together. I want you just to stretch your hands towards somebody that's standing, will you? Just stretch your hands. Find somebody standing. And just begin to pray. Intercede for them. If you've if you got faith for it, pray for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, you see every person who stands. Father, you know their life. You know their need. You know their circumstance. You know the challenge. You know the battle that they're up against. God, you know every obstacle that's trying to stand in their way. And I ask you now, in the strong name of Jesus, as we intertwine our roots, God, as we merge our faith, as we come together in prayer and we lift each other up, God, I pray that everyone standing in this room would find your strength, that they would find your hope, that even now, Lord, you would, uh, you would arrest a reckless spirit and you would fill that spirit with peace and with joy and with hope. God, I pray now in your house where there's plenty of power that those things that were going to shake an individual would not be able to shake the whole. God, remind them that greater, greater is the one that's in us than everything that is around us. Lord, I declare strength and I declare hope and I declare answers to questions. God, let us be people who are planted deep in your house deep among the people of faith that our connectivity can truly be our power that our connectivity can be that thing that reminds us that when I'm weak I've got others around me that are strong for day for those today for every person who stands and feels weak God I pray that the strength of those who are strong would intercept their weakness and enable them to stand in the name of Jesus may they stand Stand strong. Stand courageous. May you provide for every need they have. Every emotional, every physical, every financial, every relational need. May you provide for them in the name of Jesus. Who is the strong and the only Son of God. We pray it and we believe it. And we said together, amen, amen, and amen.